stage, because if you're trained on stage, you are told that the words are sacrosanct, because the playwright's guild, you cannot change any words without the permission of the playwright. So like the actor can say, I hate this thing, the director can say, I hate it too, we gotta to talk to the, to the, to the playwright. Uh, there's no such thing with Hollywood, uh, Hollywood, uh, uh, Hollywood writers. Um, but um, uh, nonetheless, the stage actors try and make it work because that's their, their training. Whereas actors who are maybe have like just kind of stumbled into motion pictures, come from like other disciplines, they'll say, I don't like this line, I'll change this line, yeah, whatever. And uh, I've actually had, had a TV episodes run off the rails by actors who wouldn't say a speech and now the movie makes no sense. You know, like they actually didn't say it. But how did he know that? And the test audience goes, how did he know that was the killer? Because he didn't say earlier the killer has a limp and, you know, and, and, uh, and one foot is smaller than the other. You know, like so that's now... That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, like, like, like it's not established. Um, We're almost out of time here, Stephen. Just what, what are you working on these days? What are you working on right now? Uh, well, I have a, um, a, a, a pilot that uh, uh, Robert Roberto was used on you know, a lot of the, start, the, uh, the recent Star Trek movies and things. Uh, we're going out with uh, shortly, uh, which is, you know, you always mention a hit. You know, you say, we're going to say it's like the Mandalorian on Earth. It's a show about bounty hunters with a kind of a, kind of a fresh take. Uh, but it's like the Mandalorian on Earth because you always want to mention a hit. So that's how you're picking yeah. Uh, and I have a, uh, a project that uh, uh, is called Radio Berlin, which is going to be a limited uh, a miniseries, which is kind of a great untold story about World War II, about the, uh, the German propaganda network that was broadcast to all the English-speaking countries to uh, 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 mess with their minds and convince America not to even enter the war. It's forgotten now. People have heard of Access Sally, but they had a complete network with comedy shows and music, uh, it was like, you know that movie in, in, um, uh, in Glorious Bastards, the movie the Nazis make? Yes. Like, you're like a, a, a hero of a nation. It's like the people making these radio shows that are like that. Uh, ah, sounds like a winner. Hero, Can't wait to see that one. Our hero is, a, is an American agent who is pretending to be one of the many American, British, Australian, and Canadian traders who were on the air. The Nazis recruited people like okay. native English speakers. Um, Steven? It's been a, a real pleasure. Uh, thanks for hanging out for the last two hours. Just okay. so uh, many, really so many great it. stories. I will stick around. What is your next topic? Is it one of, the, one of your classic topics? Uh, we're going to talk about UFOs with Preston Dennett. All right. Well, that UFOs are like uh, uh, just you know, it's, uh, we're we're we're, we're at, uh, uh, I don't know eleven. We're at Final Cap eleven with the, with the UFOs now. So I'll be I'll, I'll be sticking around <laughs> to listen to that. All right, my friend. Thank you so much, Stephen D'Souza. Here is, uh, let's see, Laura Cole taking us in a break with Sweet Escape on Coast to Coast AM. Yeah. After all the time inside our homes this past year, the time is now to get outdoors. The all new Avello Airlines is inspiring travel with flights starting as low as $19. Experience incredible wine tasting to national parks to epic outdoor adventures at the West's most beautiful destinations. With $19 fares, why not be spontaneous? Visit AvelloAir.com. That's AvelloAir.com and book your flight today. Avello Airlines. Surprisingly low fares, refreshingly smooth travel. AvelloAir.com. Restrictions may apply. Visit AvelloAir.com for details. Masks don't slow us down, they keep us moving. From the corner store, to the coffee shop, on your bike, or on the playground. Keep wearing a snug fitting mask with multiple cloth layers. Together we can end this pandemic. Visit covid19.ca.gov today to learn more. Brought to you by the Center at Sierra Health Foundation. If there's news, if things shift, if they stay the same, if things change for better or worse, regardless of what's happening, you're going to hear it here. It's what we do. Look, I'm not equating it to the mafia, but if you owe the mafia money, the one thing they want you to do is stay in touch with them. And it's the same thing with jury duty. As long as you're in touch with them and you need a little break here and there and you call in and you write student all this stuff, they're cool with you. But the moment you try to avoid jury duty by not responding and all that stuff, that's when they get pissed. The Tim Conway Jr. Show, weeknights at 6 on KFI. It's time to move out of California because I can't stand it here anymore. Where have I got?
going to go? Texas, where you have to have a shotgun on the back of your pickup truck. Washington, where you're so depressed you jump off of a building because it's always rainy. What, Florida, where the entire state is made up of my mother, a bunch of Jewish yentas? Bill Handel, mornings from 6 to 10, KFI. With Cher in town. Sharon in town. I love it. Like, you know, like Cher with everybody. <laughs> I, I got it. How about Sharon no, tell you? No, no, no. The Tim Conway Jr. Show. Oh, that I like. Weeknights at 6 on KFI. I'm Brian Berman from the KFI 24-Hour Newsroom. A federal judge in California has overturned the state's ban on assault weapons. The judge says the ban violates the constitutional right to bear arms. This ruling is not the last word. The Ninth Circuit could reinstate the weapon ban, and then the Supreme Court, with its conservative majority, could again give legal life to the AR-15 rifle. ABC's Royal Oaks says California Governor Newsom says the decision is a direct threat to public safety and the lives of innocent Californians. LA Metro has resumed service from Union Station after a suspicious package was found on the red line tracks at the station. The station was cleared out around 2 Saturday afternoon, and passengers on the red, purple, and gold lines were shuttled around while the LAPD bomb squad investigated. They determined it was a battery from an electric scooter. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says an agreement has been reached in London at the G7 summit to support a global minimum corporate tax rate of 15%. And effectively much uh, tax competition and the ability of uh, large profitable multinationals to um, take advantage of tax havens to lower their um, corporate tax liabilities. Yellen says the pact pressures nations wanting to remain tax havens. A study shows the majority of Americans think their lives are at least somewhat back to how they were before the pandemic. A Gallup survey found that 66% of participants said their lives have at least partially returned to a pre-pandemic normal. Less than 10% of people say life has gone completely back to normal. Tickets are now on sale for next year's Coachella Music Festival in Indio. The festival will be spread out over the weekends of April 15th and April 22nd of 2022. Fans have options for three-day general admission passes that can cost up to $500. VIP passes can run up to $1,000. There's no music lineups yet. The last Coachella Festival in 2019 featured Childish Gambino, Ariana Grande, and Tame Impala. There is no event this year. SoCal weather from KFI. Cloudy in the LA basin and metro areas right now. Lows in the 50s in some spots and 60s along the coast. Some low clouds and fog in the inland valleys. Look for some patches of morning drizzle. Those clouds will clear a bit in the morning, leaving a partly cloudy sky in the basin and sunny skies in the valleys. Highs in the afternoon will be in the 60s at the beaches and 70s inland. There's a wind advisory in the Antelope Valley this afternoon and evening. Gusts will reach 45 miles per hour in the foothills. Right now it's 59 degrees in Sherman Oaks, 63 in Culver City, 61 in Brea, and 63 in Irvine. We lead local. From the KFI 24-hour newsroom, I'm Brian Berubin. Checking KFI traffic, we do have a crash in the Riverside area. 91 westbound at Van Buren. It's blocking the carpool and the left lane. In Culver City, 405 northbound before the 90, a crash there blocking the right lane. Traffic is backed up to Sepulveda Boulevard. And a full closure in Fountain Valley, 405 southbound from Magnolia to Warner. All lanes closed for road work until 8.30 a.m. KFI in the Sky helps get you there faster. I'm Jonathan Weiss. Hey, it's Dean Sharp. Aldic Home is the finest source of utterly lifelike silk flowers and trees in the country. Aldic is nothing short of magical. It's the kind of place you just don't want to leave. And now, Aldic has the most beautiful patio furniture from Summer Classics. All made to your specifications in over 140 fabrics and colors. Your home and your patio deserve a visit to Aldic on Sepulveda Boulevard in Van Nuys or on the web at aldichome.com. That's A-L-D-I-K home.com. Getting families vaccinated against COVID-19 is an important step to bringing back joy for all of us. That's within reach now that the Pfizer vaccine is proven safe and effective for those 12 and older. This is the same vaccine millions of Californians have already gotten. California is even adding new vaccine clinics specifically for young people. Together, we can end the pandemic. Visit vaccinateall58.com or call 833-422-4255 to learn more. AMCO presents Bet You Didn't Know. Bet you didn't know that your car's transmission is made up of 800 pieces. Also, bet you didn't know that AMCO's fixed over 40 million transmissions and that AMCO offers a nationwide warranty. 
Are you still driving around with that check engine light on? AMCO will read and report the trouble codes on your vehicle for free. Call them today. That's AMCO, double A. MCO. Hey, it's Dean Sharp. So, what did you do during the last power outage? My guess is not much because the power was off. Yeah, nothing disrupts your life, your comfort, even your safety like a power outage. And the power companies have spoken. Outages are the new normal. So here's my advice. Set up your home with a permanent emergency generator from my friends at Duffy Power, and it never has to happen again. Duffy is Southern California's generator experts. KFI trusts Duffy with our generators, and so should you. And with 0% interest financing and payments as low as $72 a month, your emergency power is totally affordable. From the largest commercial systems to your unique home, Duffy Power will make sure your life, your comfort, and your safety won't be interrupted during the next outage or all the ones after that. Dial pound 250 on your cell and say Duffy Power. Pound 250, Duffy Power. Or find Duffy on the web at DuffyPower.com. That's D-U-T-H-I-E Power.com. That's what I'm saying. He said dilettantes. Like dilettantes a good word. Now let spell it. I don't have to spell the fancy words I use. Trying to get weekdays 2 to 6 on KFI. Don't, hey, hey, if you're wasted, what are you doing going on television? Or, or the radio, for that matter. Or the radio, for that matter. Gary and Jan, weekdays at 10 a.m. on KFI. KFI, AM 640. KFI, AM 640. What is America to me? A name. that will change the way you view UFOs and these strange visitors to our planet, including a school teacher who encounters a 15-foot-tall mantis alien during a morning jog outside her home. That conversation is just minutes away on Coast to Coast AM. Gotcha. Story with a message from BetterHelp.com. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp.com wants you to start living a happier life today. And if you log on to BetterHelp.com, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com forward slash George, they're giving you a special offer to start living a happier life. In less than 48 hours, they can assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online whenever it's convenient for you. Schedule weekly video or phone sessions that are more affordable than traditional offline and in-person counseling and financial aid is available too. They've helped more than one million people take charge of their mental health and can help you too. Visit BetterHelp.com forward slash George. Doesn't matter where you live, they can help you worldwide. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com forward slash George. BetterHelp.com. 
My doctor prescribed me Viagra. It wasn't covered by my insurance, so it was costing me like $65 a pill. That's expensive. Over 20 million guys like us use Viagra. Over a certain age, we just need it. I found a way to pay less than $3 a pill and get virtually the same effect of the $65 pill. I heard an ad just like this on the radio called, and for $99, I got 40 generic versions of the $65 pill. Save yourself money and call right now and get over 40 pills for $99. There's no embarrassment here to use Viagra. If we're over 50, we need it, but not at high prices. Call now with your credit card and get the 40 pill special for just $99. 800-847-1077. 800-847-1077. That's 800-847-1077. Paid for by Steel Man Pills. Preston Dennett began investigating UFOs and the paranormal in 1986 when he discovered that his family, friends, and co-workers were having dramatic, unexplained encounters. Since then, he's interviewed hundreds of witnesses and investigated a wide variety of paranormal phenomena. He's a field investigator for the Mutual UFO Network, a ghost hunter, a paranormal researcher, and the author of, well, more than 15 books on UFOs and the paranormal. He's also taught classes on various paranormal subjects and lectures across the United States, and his latest is called Wondrous, 25 True UFO Encounters. Hey, Preston, welcome. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks, Richard. How are you? Very well. Uh, no shortage of material. You manage to fill volume after volume after volume. How do you learn about these? Because many of them are, or most of them, never before heard. How do these stories come to you? Oh, a wide variety of ways. It's got a kind of network of people who refer me witnesses. Um, some come from the office where I work. Some people see my website. They read my books. They hear me on shows like this. Uh, they approach me at conventions. And sometimes it just, it'll just happen to come in line for post office or what have you. It's kind of synchronistic sometimes. But yeah, a wide variety of ways. And how would you characterize uh, these individuals? Are they hesitant to tell you about these stories? Do you have to drag it out of them? Are they anxious to, to, uh, to tell you? Um, well, both. I would say that people are often a little bit wary about filling the beans, so to speak. It's not unusual for them to say, you know, I haven't told this to anybody. I don't use drugs. I have a good job. There's no history of mental illness in my family. But on the other hand, they're often relieved to find someone who will take them seriously. Someone who, you know, believes, will believe them. So, yeah, you get kind of the whole range. Uh, but once they know you, you know, you won't use their name, they don't want it used or... Uh, not to make fun of them. Yeah, they will tell you. They will talk. And how do you vet them? How do you make sure that these are credible? A wide variety of ways. I mean, uh, one thing I do is a preliminary interview. I'm recorded, very informal. And if I feel like uh, this is a good witness, I will do a follow-up interview, uh, checking my notes to see if they change their story. Uh, I like to character references. It's always great when you have a multiple witness story so they can back each other up. Some people do have varying levels of evidence. Uh, if I'm able to, I will you know, check their employment record. I was able to do that with some of the military whistleblower witnesses. Uh, and yeah, you kind of look for what I would call red flags or little details that are within a person's UFO account that might not be super well-known, and you can also tell when the person you know, starts to get really emotional. Uh, I've had many people weep over the phone as they're trying to describe what they saw. Uh, things like that are, you know, certainly not possible to fake, but not easy either. Uh, and, so, right, and these 25 accounts, do any of these individuals have something in common, all of them? Um, well, that's per perhaps, I can't say that every single one had something in common. They all 
they feel a sense of awe, a sense of wonder uh, about their experiences. Um, some have scary experiences, you know, they feel traumatic, others friendly. I mean, it's evenly divided between men and women. It's not blood type, it's not race, it's not education, religion, political affiliation. It's really just a wide variety of people who have this, these experiences. So it's hard to find patterns. I would say what does turn up is that if someone has a particularly extensive encounter, there's a good chance this is something that is carried through their family. And by that I mean perhaps their parents, their grandparents for that encounter. This is particularly true with people who have taken on board or have face-to-face contact. It does seem to follow family lines. So that does turn up. And there are a few other patterns. Um, I often find that contact contactees are have a long history of psychic events. Usually not just UFOs, they will describe perhaps ghostly sightings, a near-death experience, uh, out-of-body experiences, a precognition. That's another pattern that definitely does turn up. So there are some patterns, but often it just seems to be the luck of the draw. You mentioned blood type. I thought that was interesting that you would mention that. Does that mean that you actually check their blood type? You ask what their blood type is? I will, particularly if they've had a sexual encounter because there was a lot of buzz for a while about RH negative blood type and uh, this being a, you know, a factor, so to speak. And I just have not found that to be the case. Uh, there are you know, people of all different races and nationalities uh, are having these encounters. Um, yeah. So I have not found that to be the case. And I started asking, you know, what's, what's your job? And I did find a pattern there, actually, which kind of surprised me. And again, it's a loose pattern. I'm, I'm not going to say that this is a rule, but it keeps turning up. I find like there's a high incidence of, you know, within the abductee population, I'll call it, of social workers, of doctors, teachers, artists, inventors, uh, people who are doing good work for humanity in some capacity, animal rights activists, uh, it turned up enough that uh, I'm like, huh, is this a thing? And yeah, it's not a hard and fast rule, but it's turned up enough times that I'm beginning to wonder if there's something to that. Musicians, uh, this sort of thing. So not a lot of lawyers report being abducted? <laughs> a lot of lawyers. I, there's one or two I can think of. I remember interviewing one guy who was an attorney, had an experience down in a Venice Beach with a USO. Uh, he was retired though. <laughs> uh, no, you know, it wouldn't surprise me, but that is a pattern that does turn up. Profession might be a factor here. All right, I couldn't resist a lawyer joke because <laughs> you mentioned that most of the encounters in, uh, involve people that have done something good for humanity. Obviously, there are wonderful, many wonderful lawyers out there. So uh, let's uh, dive in now to some of these wondrous cases, 25 true UFO encounters. Uh, a school teacher uh, encounters a 15-foot-tall mantis alien during a morning jog outside her home. Uh, give us the details, Preston. Yeah, this is an extraordinary case, a great witness, very lucid. Um, she actually contacted me because of what she saw. She's never heard it before, and I had actually covered another account involving a Navy medic who saw a similar being. This is 2006. She's out jogging around 4.30 a.m. outside of her home in O'Fallon, Illinois. This is a pretty rural area. She's taking her dog with her, and it's dark. Uh, there's nobody out. Very early in the morning again, and uh, goes down one street, another, is heading up towards this street uh, where there's a T intersection, and her dog stops and pricks its ears up and looks ahead. She's expecting to see, you know, a fox, maybe a deer. That's not unusual. Uh, she's approaching a street which is fairly busy during the day, but no one's on it at this hour, and she just cannot believe her eyes at what she sees. It looks like a man walking on stilts down the center of the road and fast. I mean, big 10-foot strides. And she's looking at it, trying to figure out what the heck. And her dog's watching it, too. 
and this thing walks right under the street light. And it's not quite as tall as the street light, but it's, no, it's tall. She estimates 15 feet tall, just based on the street light itself. And it wasn't a man on stilts. Uh, it wasn't even close to a man on stilts. This thing was bug-like. And she says it looked like a praying mantis. Uh, she'd never heard of praying mantis ETs, so this was a real shock. She said it had a rather large head, a very stick-like body, very long stick-like lens, was gray and colored, kind of mottled, and walking very quickly down the center of the road. And it's weird because its uh, head was sort of tilted downward as if searching the road. It was scanning the road, the path in front of it, back and forth, back and forth. As if, I don't know, maybe it had dropped something, the alien wand, or I don't know. Uh, but it was looking for something. And did it take any notice of her? No, it didn't. Uh, it did not appear to notice her at all, uh, which is unusual. Maybe it was preoccupied. Uh, she wasn't far away, 100, 200 feet, and this thing is walking pretty quickly. And she didn't turn around and run away. She actually took after this thing, ran after it. Well, that was brave. <laughs> right? I'm not sure how I would react. I'd like to think I would uh, run after it and examine it, but who knows? I mean, it's, this is 15-foot tall, bug-like, praying mantis alien. Uh, so she does. She runs after it, runs up to the intersection there, and this thing is booking down the road pretty quick ran after it for just a few more moments, not long, when it turns off into the cornfield there. And she runs up and has lost track of it at that point, and was gone. And no sign of any craft? No, never saw any craft. That's the first thing I asked her. I'm like, well, was there anything, anything in this area that is that all unusual that would attract something like this? She's like, no, you know, it's a rural area. There's a school nearby. The only thing she could think of was that it was not too far from Scott Air Force Base. She lives about six miles away as the UFO flies. And she thought that could be a factor. You know, I think it could. Um, she said Scott Air Force Base. I immediately thought of the very famous incident in the year 2000. I think it was the year 2000 when a UFO basically skirted Scott Air Force Base seen by multiple police officers over, I think, three or four counties. Uh, it was quite a famous sighting. And as I questioned her further, I found some interesting other information. Turns out this was just not long after the very famous Chicago O'Hare airport sighting, which you may have heard of. Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, this was a major sighting. It was seen by pilots, air traffic controllers, baggage handlers, passengers, punched a hole in the clouds, and got a lot of publicity. I can't say there was a connection there, but it was curious to say the least. Right, and uh, a praying mantis, <clears throat> um, I think you mentioned you, either you or she said she'd never heard of a mantis, a praying mantis type alien, but uh, we, we, we do hear about insectoid type uh, alien encounters. Are we talking about the same thing? Um, I would say, you know, people, yeah, um, it could be. Uh, she actually thought perhaps it's a grasshopper, but looking thing, but actually decided, no, it's praying mantis. And uh, people do describe sort of insectoid. And I think that is it's one of the most common types I hear. I mean, there's grays, human looking, and mantis. And beyond that, there are strange humanoids uh, of many different types. So I would say the mantis is one of the main types people see. But they're usually, I'm going to say, eight to nine feet tall. That's what I normally hear. Uh, and 15 foot, that's definitely an outlier. I've only got two cases of that now. But I have to say, she did her own research following that and uh, found out that there was another case of a mantis not too far away. So he was 30 miles away, and uh, this guy was crossing or on the road late at night and saw something crossing the road and loved it. He described it as a mantis-like alien, only it was on all fours. 
crossing the road. I've never heard that before, uh, but it's definitely interesting that it wasn't that far from where she saw her mounted. Sounds like there might be something going on at the Scott Air Force Base. If, if something like that had happened to any of us, I would imagine it would it would forever change the trajectory of your life. I mean, how can you see something like that and not be inalterably changed? Did she talk to you about how it had changed her, if at all? Yeah. Well, she did go jogging the next day. <laughs> she did not stop jogging. Um, that I found kind of interesting. Uh, she told her family only, uh, her husband and her kids. She does have I think, five, four or five kids. Uh, she once brought it up at a dinner party and kind of regretted it. There was a colonel or someone high-ranking who actually worked at Scott Air Force Base. And he just kind of gave her a look like, I don't want to talk about that at all. But further questioning did reveal something very interesting because uh, usually when someone sees something that close, uh, it's not a one-off. You know what I mean? This is usually points towards the history of encounters, and that turned out to be true. I asked her about her childhood, like anything unusual. And she says, well, yeah. You know, when I was a little girl, a toddler, um, she had strange figures entering in her bedroom. Short little figures, it was dark, she couldn't really see them. It would scare her very badly. She called her parents, they'd come running in. Nothing was ever there. Her parents got so upset. They, she was doing it so often, you know, screaming in the middle of the night. They're here, they're here, that they forbade her from waking them up. And on one occasion, uh, she does remember being not in her bedroom, but in a small rounded room, uh, laid on a metallic table, it was very bright. She could see silhouettes of these figures, but again, couldn't get a really good look at them. She was pretty frightened about it, but she did look to her side and saw a little table-like thing with silver, you know, metallic medical instruments. And that freaked her out a little bit. She felt like she was about to be operated on. Um, that's all she really remembers, but this does point to the pattern that I see quite a bit. Someone is having you know, a real close encounter, there's a good chance this is something that started in early childhood, and that was true for, in our case. What do these uh, witnesses want from you, aside from just being able to tell their story? Do they, do they ask for advice on what they should do or, or what they're to do with this information, this, you know, this experience? Uh, yeah, I, I do get many calls from people who just want someone to talk to, um, verification, they want comfort. It's always my first goal is to sort of help the, the witness uh, and uh, in any way I can. Um, many people feel like their story was so remarkable, changed it so profoundly. They feel it's really important that people know that this sort of thing is going on, that these sort of beings are on our planet uh, because it you know, so completely shocked them. They really want their story to be told. Uh, but yeah, you get all kinds of reasons why people will contact you. Um, I've often had people like, don't tell anyone, you promised me you will not tell a soul. I'm like, of course, you know, I would never. Uh, so not a lot of people, I mean, most people I don't think are really looking to Know, get their story out there. They just want information. Like, has anyone seen this before? I, that's why she called me. She was hoping you know, that I could have more information for her. And I could only show the other account that I had put in a previous book, which she had already read. Uh, and uh, yeah, I had to tell her, no, I, I don't have any other cases like yours. Just that one. Uh, we're heading into a break here. Uh, when we come back, I want to talk about this young couple uh, that is expecting their first child only to discover that they believe extraterrestrials have taken their baby. Uh, we'll talk about that as well as the uh, dental assistant who awakens to find a bug-like alien uh, or bug-like aliens, plural, surrounding her bed. Preston Dennett is with us, the author of Wondrous 25 True UFO Encounters. Now, here is St. Paul and the Broken Bones taking us into the break with I'm Torn Up on Coast to Coast AM.
been rescued by firefighters in Sherman Oaks. The tree trimmer was caught on top of a 45-foot palm tree Saturday morning and had to be helped down. An iconic picture of resistance has returned after Bing blocked it. People searching Tank Man on Bing on the 32nd anniversary of the bloody crackdown on Beijing's Tiananmen Square have come up empty in several parts of the world, including the U.S., prompting calls of censorship. Tank Man is the nickname of an unidentified Chinese man who stood in front of tanks in Tiananmen Square that day in 1989. Microsoft has called it an accidental human error and search results are popping up again. China regularly censors online discussion about Tiananmen Square, but those restrictions usually don't apply outside the country. Microsoft did not elaborate on what the human error was or how it happened. Amy King, KFI News. SoCal weather from KFI. Drizzle overnight in the Inland Empire, lows in the 50s. Partly cloudy in the morning with patchy fog, turning into mostly sunny skies by the afternoon. Highs in the 80s. We lead local from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. I'm Brian Baruman. Turkey KFI traffic on the 405 northbound from Brookhurst to Warner. A full closure due to road work. All lanes closed until 8.30 a.m. New Culver City on the 405 northbound before the 90. Two-car wreck blocking the right lane. And a full closure in Westminster, 405 south from the 22 to Spring.